Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Coming Soon Movie News with Nicholson, coming to you from Los Angeles, California. Um, I'm here to talk about the legendary pictures panel at Comic-Con and uh, everything that was talked about on there. So a couple of surprises. One, we, we kind of thought that they were going to address something about Godzilla 2, either whether or not just confirming that it is on its way, even though they already did say that Godzilla 2 was in development, um, that, uh, that it was going to be on its way, but they did one thing more than that. They actually showed a sizzle reel from the film. Um, again, it, it's not exactly footage that we're going to be seeing in the film, very much like what they did three years ago for the original Godzilla that, that just came out this year. Um, but uh, it's made to look like a 60s research video, a 1960s research video, and it's narrated by JFK talking about dangers and, and things like that. Um, but then on the screen, a title card comes up and it says, there were others. And then you see a shadow of a pterodactyl, codename Rodan. Then you see an extreme close-up of a giant moth creature, codename Mothra. Then a silhouette of a dragon feature, codename Ghidra. Then threat assessment, conflict, in, or conflict inevitable, followed by let them fight. <laughs> The, fa the fact that they were able to get over the legal issues about uh, with Toho about actually utilizing the characters from the original Godzilla stories is beyond incredible. The fact that in Godzilla 2 we're getting three monsters. Now, I'm getting ahead of myself because they didn't officially announce that these were the characters that were going to be appearing in Godzilla 2. These were the characters that are going to be appearing in future Godzilla movies. Whether or not they're all addressed in Godzilla 2 is another thing. But there's another thing, uh, after I get done with this part, there's another thing that leads into what could potentially be in a future Godzilla film. Um, but Gareth Edwards, who directed Godzilla and is currently signed on to direct the first uh, Star Wars spin-off film, um, they did confirm that he will be directing Godzilla 2 and that it will be uh, released most likely after um, Star Wars, the, the first spin-off movie, which is supposedly released in December 2016 which means he'll be starting that in 2017. So either late summer, fall 2018 or early 2019 is when we're gonna be getting um, Godzilla 2. I'm gonna put money on 2019 because he's probably gonna want a little bit of time to develop that. Although that does leave a considerable time jump between the installments. The Legendary is probably gonna want it to get out in 2018. They're probably gonna set a 2018 release date. I wouldn't be surprised about that. And so, um, we know that he's going to be coming back, so there's going to be a a tone similar or um, um, a similar tone to both films. There's going to be a continuity between them, and uh, that's always a good thing because you don't want it to, to severely shift because then it gets confusing and then you don't really understand why. The one thing that I hope that happens that if all three of these characters are going to be in the next Godzilla film, we don't even have to worry about this. I just hope they don't do what they did with this Godzilla, which is keep hiding him, because they kept. As soon as the fight was about to break out, they cut to the humans. I don't want to see the humans. At least, if, if you're going to show us the humans, give us humans to care about. Don't, in, in Aaron Taylor Johnson and Elizabeth Olsen, you didn't care about their characters in this movie, in the first one, because they didn't, either they didn't develop them enough or they just didn't feel like they needed to be developed enough because people were anticipating Godzilla. And we got little teeny tiny glimpses until about the last 20 minutes of the movie. Then it was pretty much a full-on Godzilla battle. And I hope they curb that with the next one. And if they include all these three guys, then that will definitely happen. Right after that, though, um, they came out and they showed some footage from Warcraft. And uh, it was unfinished footage. A lot of it was uh, almost previs uh, quality. So, I mean, including the orcs and, and things like that. But we do know that Travis Fimmel from Vikings is playing the human leader. And um, they didn't announce who was actually playing the orc leader. But if it's going to be mocap, which I know they are doing mocap, then... I'm going to just go out on a limb and say that it's Toby Kebbell because Toby Kebbell did an amazing job. We know that he's in the film and, and he did an unbelievably amazing job as, um, as Koba in Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Um, but they did show some, some footage, including Travis Fimmel flying on a giant eagle about to attack an orc. They also showed Ben Foster's character who plays a mage and you see him powering up. Um, but the main thing about the film as well is they did talk about how this is... This is a, an origin story telling both sides of the conflict about why this war, store, this war started between the orcs and between the humans. It's not a full-on World of Warcraft remake. It's actually a version of the first um, Warcraft uh, game, but it's, it's an origin story, so it's almost set before that. So 
Um, they did. They did say that they're they'll be showing both sides of the conflict, which to me is a really good thing, because that way they're not just saying these are the good guys, and no matter what they do, they're always going to be the good guys. These are the bad guys, and no matter what they do, they're always going to be the bad guys. It's going to be a very balanced, very, uh, very two way street in terms of the storytelling, which I'm very excited to see. And then they came up with a very special surprise, and that was that. They're doing Skull Island, which is going to be a prequel to King Kong, and that's going to be released on November 4th, 2016. They did show a little sizzle reel about that too, but it was it was just very basic. It was uh, a storm, the camera going up into an island, cutting through all the foliage, and then you just see King Kong battering his chest and roaring, and then the title card came up. But that leads people to assume, because this is a legendary panel, and King Kong is, is included in that, that we may potentially get a King Kong... Uh, Godzilla crossover. The only way that they can do that, at least in my opinion, I stated this earlier on Twitter, is they they have to do something with the size of King Kong because this is the largest Godzilla that we've ever had. He's over 300 feet tall and King Kong is under 30 feet. So Godzilla could literally just step on him. Unless they do something with his, either his size or they make him kind of like a superhero and they give him sort of this growing capability or something of that sort. I don't see it working out, but we're going to need to get more information about this once we get more information about Skull Island and, and the kind of take that they're doing on, because as far as I'm aware, Peter Jackson has nothing to do with this. Um, we're going to get more information about it, so then we're going to get a better understanding of how this fits in and whether or not we're actually going to be able to get a King Kong Godzilla crossover movie. And if that does happen... Um, somebody actually suggested to me on Twitter that they should, they would actually maybe team up and that's how that could work. Uh, and it could, but again, he's so small, he's, he could fit in Godzilla's hand. So again, I, I, until we actually get to see the new version of King Kong that they're going for, I don't really see how this could work. But, um, that being said, it's still a really cool concept. Uh, and the legendary panel, I think, out of everything, with the exception of the Batman v Superman footage, I think was one of the most spectacular panels that was at Comic-Con this year, because overall, Comic-Con was a little bit underwhelming. Uh, a lot of things really disappointed a lot of people in terms of what they were expecting. Now, that could also be because a lot of the companies are getting ahead of themselves and announcing things, at least release dates or things like that, well before they're supposed to be coming out, but still. Um, anyway, if you guys like the video, go ahead and click subscribe there in the bottom corner. You can also follow me on Twitter at Nicholson, N-I-K-L-S-U-N, for all of your movie updates. And don't forget to find us on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash movienewswithnicholson. And until next time, you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.